Halloween, my children! The spooky season is almost over. So let us conclude the best time of the year by concluding a story of the DC Universe fighting vampires. When last we left off, things were pretty bad for the heroes. Nightwing stood revealed as the Vampire King, Batman himself dead, forests burning and ashen clouds covering the earth to prevent sunlight from getting in. And now even Superman has been turned. Some time has passed since the last volume. The vampires have overtaken and conquered the earth, with a small band of lesser known superheroes trying to make their way to a secret sanctuary, led by former DEO director Bones. Can you guess why I like him, my children? The convoy is intercepted, but Jaina of the Wonder Twins, now Wonder Solo, manages to pierce Firestorm and cause him to explode, blasting everything and everyone. Director Bones' head is still alive. Yes, yes, before anyone says it, he's not really a skeleton. He's just got transparent flesh or whatever. A magic spell was put on him to keep him going until they reach the city. Let me have my talking skulls! And encourages her to go on with a particular car. And indeed, she reaches the sanctuary. In reality, the bottle city of Kandor. The Kryptonians inside were long ago killed by the vampires, but the city itself serves as a good refuge, buried underground. Inside of the car, and why it needed to reach the city, was Supergirl. She's deprived of her powers because of the lack of sunlight, but not only did she serve as an important symbol of hope for the heroes, they think she might be their key to turning things around. Though the heroes are split on the best course of action. Green Arrow wants to save the humans trapped around small that are serving as blood farms for the vampires. Batgirl wants to go to Gotham and kill Dick Grayson, take out the vampire leadership. Dr. Fate is all about the Supergirl plan. Oliver Queen decides to go ahead with his plan on his own since no one else supports it. John Constantine is also working with Damian Wayne, who is a vampire, but opposes what has happened to the world, to get something magical to help out in Gotham. But soon the vampires realize the magic users are in the House of Mystery, an attack in force. Barbara has dreams of Nightwing summoning her to Gotham, but knows that they are not dreams, but actual visions he is sending her. To get back in, they need Harley Quinn, who is being experimented on by the mad scientists in Kandor, who are trying to find out why her blood is poisonous to vampires. They refuse to give her up, but she is able to convince them to let her go. Frankenstein even volunteers to join in the assault on Gotham. Supergirl, Steel, Jaina, and Black Manta are on their way to Australia, where there's a spaceship they can use to get the Girl of Steel into the sunlight. Apparently aliens are being kept away from Earth to prevent, say, Green Lanterns from freeing the planet when existing aliens are being sent off world. The journey is long and treacherous, but Jaina's powers have evolved, now being able to shapeshift into animals and into watery forms like her brother. Unfortunately, when they finally reach the shores of Australia, they come face to face with the vampiric Aquaman, who knows that Black Manta is not Black Manta that he died early in the vampiric conquest. And so they take off the helmet to reveal Mera, Aquaman's former wife, who is now more than happy to take the fight to him directly. Green Arrow reaches the human farms, making a big show of killing the guards with various forces sent out against him, but his true goal is to talk to the vampire Hawkman, who oversees the farms. Oliver is giving him one final chance to join the good guys again. Which of course he refuses. In Gotham, with the help of the vampiric Damian Wayne, they manage to enter the city, even protected by the magical force that Constantine had gotten for him. In the human farm, Oliver reveals to the anti-hero Grifter his plan by peeing on a bit of swamp thing to regrow him. I'm pretty sure that's actually bad for plants, but whatever, cape and costume crap has never made sense to me. While well, Supergirl's group, minus Mera, reach the spaceship, Batgirl initiates her plan. She has had agents inside Gotham for some time now, partially thanks to Nightwing allowing humans to run around the city so he could hunt them instead of just farming them. As such, they have set up UV bat signals all over the city, her bat family agents burning away the vampires as they go. In Australia, they find the spaceship guarded by Lobo, who's being paid 
But Supergirl cuts him some other deal to get him to switch sides. Unfortunately, the Martian Manhunter watches over the spaceship, so he is quickly drawn out and a fight ensues. Though they secretly got Supergirl on board the ship. It manages to get into the sunlight right before the vampires blow it up. Green Arrow, meanwhile, begins his breakout plan with Swamp Thing and Grifter, arming as many trapped humans as possible and using arrows made from Swamp Thing to launch into Hawkman, destroying him from the inside out. Constantine arrives in Australia with some additional help. Mary Marvel, who is protecting Damien in Gotham, and Captain Cold, in the process of becoming a vampire, but not quite there yet. Mary saves Supergirl, and Captain Cold is able to use his freeze gun to make a small opening in the cloud cover to recharge the Girl of Steel. Ah, but that brings us back to Batgirl. Her forces are less fortunate. She and Harley Quinn captured and brought to Nightwing. Either she is incredibly stupid, unlikely given who she is, or Nightwing has been slowly brainwashing her in her dreams, because she is reluctant to finally slay the Vampire King, to the point where Dick actually transforms her. However, it seems he didn't get the memo about Harley, since she convinces him to drink her blood, and is vaporized. However, she has now become like them. So she takes his place as the new Vampire Queen, swearing that she has no weaknesses, unlike him, and will lead the vampire race to victory. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say this was the conclusion to DC vs. Vampires? No, my children. Like Halloween, it doesn't actually end, it just goes on break for a while to come back stronger. Like the undead bloodsuckers, we must go to rest for a time. Get out of the brightness for a bit. And rest assured, we will be back again. Until next time, my children. <laughs> Damn, in terror, only in the lumbox of the damned.